Welcome to The Business Mind. Join me, Mark Fechner, as I sit down with business leaders to discuss their real world challenges and formulate forward thinking, creative solutions. We focus on real people with real issues and we tackle those issues in real time. I don't have the answers. I help you find the answers within you. Sometimes all that is needed is just a slight change in perception. The Business Mind Show starts now. Good morning, everyone. I am Mark Fechner, and welcome to The Business Mind here on Transformation Talk Radio, the show that highlights our guest's pursuit of excellence through the process of one-on-one coaching. I would love for you to be part of our conversation, so please feel free to add comments or questions to the Transformation Talk Radio website, or if you would prefer, our Facebook live feed uh, forward slash Transformation Talk Radio. So for the last few episodes, I've been opening with the fact that we are three years post-pandemic in this country, and a lot of businesses, executives, and a lot of my guests are in the process of trying to uh, transition, uh, adapt their businesses to this new economic paradigm that that we're all facing. Uh, But if you are in the arts, if you are in the theater, in music, uh, in the fine arts community, in gallery showings, this challenge has been even more difficult. Just because for the most part, um, artists rely upon the discretionary income of their patrons to uh, provide an income. So if people don't go to the theater, if they don't buy art, if they don't, uh, you know, go to concerts, Uh, the artists don't have an income. So we're going to talk about this very subject with my guest. Uh, He is an award-winning fine arts painter. He is the owner of Vandervin Studios. Please welcome Mr. Mark Vandervin. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. (laughs) How are you, sir? (laughs) I'm doing well. How about you, man? (laughs) So, um, I did give, I mean, regardless of my introduction, please feel free to tell us a little bit about more about you, your art, and uh, and, and what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I am, well, there's, there's a lot to talk about for sure. Um, myself, uh, I am, I call myself a tonal impressionist uh, landscape artist. Um, I marry sort of the idea of the tonalism, which is, uh, the Hudson River School style of art with the Impressionist style of art, um, okay. kind of the East Coast to the West Coast, being in the Midwest, you know, kind of grew up with both styles. Um, went to the American Academy of Art in Chicago, graduated in 1991, started in illustration before I got into advertising. Um, stopped painting completely for a while, raising a family and all, and then got into uh, got back into painting again. And once I started doing that, then it was, okay, how do I turn this more into a business? Uh, Because uh, as Mark and I have talked before, uh, the arts are a business, you know, the creative process. I always viewed the creative process as not, but the, but after you have the product, then it becomes one, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, The challenge lately has been, uh, as you had mentioned about the pandemic, um, I was in three galleries before the pandemic. Um, one of them folded at the very start of it. One of them folded in the middle of it. And the other one uh, just recently retired the, in October of last month. So mm-hmm. at this current point, I am no longer in any galleries. Um, I do some local art fairs here or there. Um, but the challenge is really how do I get my work in front of people who are trying to buy it now? Because right. before I didn't have to rely on myself for that, I could rely on the galleries to do that. But now, since there's really not many galleries left. Uh, it's much harder to do that. So that's and you my shared with And you shared with me um, in our pre, mm-hmm. uh, pre-interview pre stuff, 40 to 50%, it, it, the, the amount of money that the galleries are taking, I, it, it was really eye-opening to me. You know, yeah. how much uh, money that they take uh, out of the sale uh, when, when something is at their, in their galleries. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's almost highway robbery in some ways, and we artists kind of view it that way. But at the same time, it's a it, we in a way we in the past we've needed them, so we've put mm-hmm. up with them. You know, um, 
if you're dealing with an agent, if you're a musician or a, or an artist, illustrator or something dealing with an agent, I believe they're they're commonly taking. And you can correct me on this. You may have some experience in this, but I know with with uh, with uh, illustration agents, they're commonly taking about 25, 30 percent somewhere somewhere there, you know, um, at most. But in the gallery world, they're taking commonly between forty and fifty percent, and even higher. That's um, wow. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I signed on, uh, I signed on at a gallery in, on Michigan Avenue for a year, um, just to see how it would work, you know. And I agree. By, by the way, Michigan Avenue in Chicago, just in Chicago, for our yeah, audience's sake. Um, and and I, I did it as an experiment. I was going into it as an experiment. Mm-hmm. Um, they doubled my prices overnight, and took seventy five percent. Which again, I agreed to. I knew what I was getting into. Right. And no, yeah, I understand. I've got but a good still, friend who's like, that's just insane. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it was. And I knew it was, you know. Um, and, and and so for that 40, 50, 75 percent, what is the gallery providing the artists? Um they're commonly providing a show a year, a solo exhibit is a year. Okay. Um and again, the seventy-five percent is extreme. That's that, that's practically well. It's perfect. Michigan Avenue, which is already yeah. a high rent. Exactly. You know, exactly. You know, high rent district. So you know, yeah, yeah. That, so but. so they're they're providing one their clientele. If if they've been a gallery that's been around for a while, they've built up a clientele list. Mm-hmm. You know, so so you're getting their clientele. You're getting introduced to their buyers and people who buy from galleries are buyers. They're not just lookers. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, they're actually going to buy the artwork um so you're getting that you're getting exposure in that respect you're you're getting usually a, a solo exhibit a year it's usually in the agreement not always but but usually is um sometimes group shows are in there as well you know mm-hmm. you can be part of a group show um it used to be that they would pay for all advertising um but mm-hmm. that has changed now um mm-hmm. it's not it's not nowhere near as common uh, now I know they they kind of expect an artist to to do their own advertising for a while before they'll pick them up to make sure that they're committed to their own career. And even then, I've heard of galleries. I've not experienced this, but I've heard of galleries splitting the advertising costs with the mm. with the artist. It it kind of harkens me back to the days of when you'd go to a a restaurant or a or a bar, and they and they would look at you saying, "Well, how many people do you have?" You know who's how big is your following? How right, big is exactly. your mailing list? And if you didn't have a certain number of people on your mailing list, they weren't interested in booking you. That's correct because their interest is selling beer, you know, yeah. uh, at the bar. Um, as a jazz musician, <laughs> I was I was not in the kind of crowd that would you know elicit a lot of beer drinking (laughs) you needed to go punk rock mark (laughs) i needed to go punk rock and that just wasn't in the cards um (laughs) um but i mean so i mean that's what it sort of sounds like you know until you until you have a certain following we we're not interested in yeah and having you show up uh or hang your stuff in our gallery yeah It, it it definitely you definitely get that feeling that's interesting. Okay. Especially with the larger galleries, you know. So in our conversation today, what specifically would you like to explore? Um, I think I would like to explore, again, I think I'd like to maybe do some brainstorming and just try to figure out what are some other options for me, okay. you know, that I can go and get my work in front of people. I mean, there are things I, I am currently doing. Mm-hmm. Um uh, a little few and far between, or few and far between. Certainly, things I'm I'm considering doing. I've been done a lot of my own kind of brainstorming on this as well. Uh, but you know, the hard part is always the hard part is always trying to figure out is it viable to spend the money towards those things when you don't know what the return will be. Mm-hmm. You know, but that's um, that's sort of the challenge of everyone who does any kind of marketing whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It is. <laughs> it is. Um, you know, but I also, uh, being in advertising, you know, one of the, one of the things that we, we say is, you know, what, ha- what happens when you don't do any advertising? Nothing. That's true. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> you know, it's, it's part, part of it is the promotion of it. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, I think this is a good place uh, to take a quick break. Uh, again, you are listening to The Business Mind. I am Mark Fechner. Uh, remember, please make your comments uh, or questions on our Facebook live feed or the Transformation Talk Radio website. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about and do a little brainstorming on what we can do about uh, and, and helping how artists can get their artwork and name and whatnot out there. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Business Mind. I am Mark Beckner. And my guest today, Mark Vanderven of Vanderven Studios. Uh, we're talking about the, the challenges that artists in general face in creating art and trying to create a living at the same time. Um, uh, Mark, just before we go too further uh, into this, how can uh, our audience get a hold of you? Uh, the easiest way is at my website. Um, which okay. is Vandervin Studio, uh, dot com. Uh, you know, Vandervin is V A N D E R V I N N E Studio. Correct. Singular Correct. Singular or plural? Uh, one. I only got, studio. Only got one. Only got one studio. This is it. <laughs> yeah. <Dot com. laughs> um, you know, you can also just type in my name, Mark Vandervin, in it, you know, or even markvandervin.com. I've got a forward link to it. It'll, it'll take you to the, to the, yeah. that and if you do well. type in his name, uh, uh, you'll get up, you can always find a bunch of images that, that Mark has, uh, as a matter of fact, during the show, we can't see it right now, but there are some of his images, some of his paintings, yeah. uh, being displayed. So if you have any interest in those, please, yeah. um, reach out to Mark and, and have a conversation with him about that. Yeah. So website has, has all my information, uh, Instagram, Facebook as well. So, okay. Oh, good. Instagram. Too. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah. Great. Absolutely. Um, so before we, before we, before the break, we talked about, you know, let's discuss uh, or brainstorm some ideas of how you can, you know, get your artwork out there, how you can, you know, be more visible. So one of the things I want to ask about, and <clears throat> the pandemic has taught us a lot of things. Uh, it's taught us about how we do business. It's highlighted some of the um deficiencies that we have in how we transact business uh, over the last three years there you know the things that were problems before kind of got a big old spotlight on them uh, during the pandemic so in your case what what is what has the pandemic taught you about your business mm. um about my business um i think well how do i put this there's kind of a couple different aspects of this one is i think it's it's taught me and several other artists that we have to kind of do this on our own now that we've got to be our own marketing firms our own you know promoters mm -hmm. our own you know ways of getting our name out show exhibitors etc um Personally, uh, I actually struggled a lot through the uh, through the pandemic and found it very difficult to create because I didn't have any deadlines to create too. Oh, and okay. I find if I've got like, oh, I've got a show coming up, I can be very focused on the work and get get the work done. Mm -hmm. But when there is no show coming up or no plein air event coming up because they've all been canceled, suddenly I'm going, well, then, you know, I have to paint for me, but the, the I don't know that, you know, I find that deadlines really help me. <laughs> Okay. get stuff done you know cool. otherwise it's like well i don't really have to get that done or you know or i can stay on one painting for way too long you mm -hmm. know <laughs> mm -hmm. so those are probably the things i've learned you know okay and the camaraderie just the just the being able to get together with other artists talk art show art critique art you know so we, you can get better as an artist uh, again i'm a forever student so you know always trying to be better um i think and that's, that's what those plein air events are yeah so a plein air event uh, I, i'm also a plein air painter and all that means is outside so because i paint landscapes you know um there are studio landscape painters and i do a fair amount of my my work in the studio as well but i find that working from life is the best way to paint 
So I try at least to get out and do studies outside. So I'm literally working from life. It's like, it's no different to me than a portrait painter working from a model. They're working from life. And then, then they can really see what color is doing, values are doing, shadows, light, et cetera, mm -hmm. and really capture that well. Um, I'm just a landscape painter. So my my figure, you know, is outside in nature. Right. Yeah. Right. So they hold these events, these festivals um, that can be anywhere from a day to a week long where you go and you paint for that time period and at the end of it they put a show together in a big you know event it's, and it's fun they're they're a blast to do i do love them and uh, i've got one coming up uh in well i've got the first press of spring in april third week of april april uh, that's just down in new harmony indiana and then i've got the paint grand traverse michigan in june oh okay so i've got a couple of them coming up cool um so when 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 you say one of the challenges or one of the deficiencies that have come up and what you've learned is that artists in your your particular genre mm -hmm. have to start thinking about their being their own marketers. Tell me more about that. Uh artists like to paint. We're not great we're commonly, and I include myself in this uh, very much, uh, commonly not great business people. <laughs> you know, uh, we're creatives. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Yeah. We want to come no. up with, with ideas. We want to, you know, play with color and things. Um, marketing. But in order to have a business, you have to get your name out. You have to get customers. Right. You have to get clientele, patrons, or whatever you want to call them. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to get right. somebody to buy the work. Right. You know? um, and that supports me. So, um, that's the challenge is I'm not even even though um even though I've been in the in the advertising business you know industry, I find it very difficult to market myself or or brand myself, you know, in a way that I that I think is works well to show what I do, you know. I, I had a friend tell me once, and he, I think he's 100 percent right. He's like, if I could say it in words, I wouldn't have to paint. <laughs> you know. Like, which, I'd be which, right. which sort of belies the whole notion of a, a picture's worth a thousand words. <laughs> well, you know, it, it is, but you don't have to say the words, you know. <laughs> yeah. But it's you know, it's just that idea. It's like it's it's hard to it's hard to toot your own horn. It's hard to figure out how to do that consistently, where to do that consistently, even sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, I know for myself, I'm on and off with Instagram. I've been posting a few posts recently. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, but then I'll take a break from that. And because I'll just be focused on something else on, on painting or shows or getting things together. So, you know, and I, oh, I got to get, get posting again, instead of making a habit of making sure I'm posting something every, every day, every other day. I mean, I don't even right. know what's expected anymore. Right. You know? Right. Um, so for yourself, what have you learned about your own marketing um, and what, what has been most effective for you? Um, I think doing the plein air events is very effective. Okay. You get to meet the clientele, you get to, you know, the, the collectors who are buying your work. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a public affair they they promote it all i don't have to do any of the promotion of it really i mean i do my own personal promotion of it but mm -hmm. not to the level that that the the event uh, usually a uh, art center or organization is putting it on um they do a lot more of promoting it than i than i have to do um, i just get to mm -hmm. show up and, and be hey look here's one of our artists and if you find him go paint you know talk yeah. to him and stuff you know and 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 those are, I mean, they're somewhat structured in, in ways like you have to be at certain things at certain times, you know, uh, so that you, so to make sure that the collectors get to meet you, which I think okay. is a great thing. You know, I'm, I'm all for meeting my collectors, you know. Um, I think we buy from the, uh, from the artist as much as we buy the work. Okay. Uh, our connection to the work, I should say. Um, so I think that's probably the number one, probably the the best 
way I've gotten my name out there. That and doing and getting awards um, at these events or at mm-hmm. shows, you mm-hmm. know, it gives you something that you can promote. Um, it gets printed in newspaper in addition to or yeah, 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 or online and stuff. So, and, and and shows a legitimacy to you as an artist. I think right. People say, yeah. "Oh no, he's I." Award winner. And 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 having gone through your Facebook page and um i don't think we're connected via instagram but i'll fix that after the show for now we should be buddy so yeah we should (laughs) absolutely we we will fix it (laughs) yes we will um you know you you certainly have had a lot of events and where you've been awarded you know where where you've been i don't know blue ribbon is such a thing in in your world but it is it is yeah yeah so so what is the um what's the possibility that if plain hour events are effective for you and what you're doing what's the possibility you could do more of them oh uh there are lots of them okay so in that respect i can be doing lots of them okay the the challenge arises and um it's certainly something I've, I've thought a lot about is often you have to travel for these events right so your overhead starts to go up right you know obviously yes right so you know if if you sell well you know you can cover costs and hopefully make a profit right if you don't you know or get awards you know because awards they give you money as well or most mm-hmm. places do um, you can make money that way. If you don't, then that becomes um, that that's a lot harder. Like, you know, <laughs> like, you know, you, you can make decent money at these things, um, especially the really big ones. I've not been a part of the the national ones, the Sonomas and, and those things, mm-hmm. um, you know, but you can make money at m- money at those things. Um, I, I think the slightly off topic here so pull me back if you want mark i think okay. the, the 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 best money making machine i've got is teaching workshops okay. i make the most money when i teach workshops okay you know um and that's one of those things that as an artist we have to think about is we have to think in terms of multiple streams of income right you know i don't know too many i know a couple but i don't know too many artists that make a living solely off of selling their artwork unless you're probably in that top 0.1 percent of correct artists out there the thomas kincaid's that you know are kind of ubiquitous throughout a lot of the smaller galleries uh yeah in the country yeah yeah most are unable to to do that Uh, most of them have multiple streams whether they're selling prints whether they're doing workshops, um, you know, there's a few different ways, you know, right. some, some calendars and whatever else, you know, um, multiple ways to do it. So, so figuring those things out too. You know? Okay. Um, so how do you go about uh, incorporating more workshops into your business plan? Uh Getting a hold of art centers um, and finding out if they're interested in, in hosting me as a, as a guest artist workshop. Okay. It's, it's it, it sounds really easy <laughs> and probably is, yeah. um, you know, like anything, it's finding those art centers, you know, okay. and then seeing if they'll be able, if, if they're willing to have the agreement, um, you know, I, I, how in order for me to make money at a workshop, and this is getting a little in depth here. I hope you don't mind. That's fine. Um, That's fine. In order for me to make money at a workshop, I have to I have to do it as a per person cost. Mm-hmm. So if I'm doing a let's say I'm doing a three day workshop and I've got a, you know and I can expect to have a minimum of five people, mm-hmm. I need to put a per person cost on that group. Right now, hopefully, I can have ten. You know, once you get much past 10, you get to like 12 and 14, that, that workshop starts to become very difficult to actually manage. Right. The 10 spot is is the perfect spot. 
Right. So, so you price it per person. And then I just tell the galleries or, the, or the, whether it's through a gallery or an art center, um, this is what I need. You tack on what you need mm-hmm. and let them tack on however much they want. Right. You know? Whatever profit they need to. Right. And they uh, could double it or they could do very low or 10% or whatever, whatever right. they feel they need to make their money. Okay. You know? Um, that's why I think those are pretty profitable. I do know places that are, well, we'll only pay you like 20 bucks an hour, $25 an hour or something like that. I'm like, well, I spent 40 hours on the workshop before I even came into the workshop. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. How am I recouping that cost? Yeah. 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 Um, um, and so kind of putting on your advertising hat, then your marketing, okay. how can you go about using those skills? to get into doing more of those types of workshops. Yeah, this is where I, I, I this is where I, I always wonder, like, is it better to do cold calling? Is it better to send a preliminary brochure, you know, mm-hmm. just to introduce myself a little bit and then do a call afterwards, you know, mm-hmm. um, in order to, because that's part of it, you know, the, a lot of it is how do I introduce myself to these people who I've never met? Right. If I've met you, we can have that conversation. I can have it pretty easily. But if I've Absolutely. never met you. Right. You know, um, how do I go about introducing myself and saying this is what I have? Well, how did you go about getting into this, the the doing the workshops and the plain air events that you do now? How how did that come about? Um, it it came about through friends mostly okay um the very first one i ever did was door county which i didn't realize at the time how big of a one that actually is um and it was early on in doors um they had just started up i think it was their second or third year right uh, and i just had a friend uh kathleen newman who said hey i'm gonna be up in door county at plenary event. why don't you apply and see if you can get into you know so I was mm-hmm. like, cool. Okay. I've never done one, never done one. <laughs> no idea what to expect. <laughs> you know, J- Jump in, get in and, and just have an amazing event, sell out. You know, I mean, it was mm-hmm. an incredible event. Um, went back uh, a couple of years later, a couple of few years later. And uh, the, the level of art had changed drastically. Okay. Um, it was now dealing with a lot more nationally recognized artists and even some internationally oh, recognized okay. artists. Okay. Um, I was still in my beginning stages of getting back into the art world, mm-hmm. you know, uh, felt really out of place and painted horribly. <laughs> okay. you know? well, yeah. Yeah. You know, the failures we have for success, right? <laughs> um. <laughs> well, and, and, and I would say that if it's only a failure, if you didn't learn anything from it. Oh, I learned a ton. That's it. That's exactly right. And that's how I look at it too, Mark. Uh, and I learned a ton, you know, and a lot of it was get your nose to the grindstone and learn how to do this well. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, but, but yeah, through, through friends mostly. Um, okay. And then through doing these, these planner events, uh, like last year I taught at, at Paint Grand Traverse because uh, I'd done the Paint Grand Traverse the year or so before. And I was like, hey, I'd like to, you know, be curious if you'd be wondering if I could do a workshop here. And they'd be like, oh yeah, we'd love you, you know? So, okay, you know, that way. But then I've already met the person, so it's easy to do. It's the so other I, So in, in thinking about that and just in business in general, what you're basically doing is you're tapping into a network of individuals that you know that do these things. And what what i know of networks is that you know people of the same feather flock together so you know the person that you know is hosting the door event um probably knows people elsewhere so what's the possibility you could you know talk to you people that you already know and say hey listen i'm looking to do more of these Hmm. what is you know who are the people that you know that I could contact and get a warm introduction? What's, what's the possibility of doing that? Um, uh, I would say pretty good. I, 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 in fact, I, I, uh, yes, I would say pretty good. Uh, last year at Pink Grand Traverse, I met Gina Ward, who is, works for Plain Air Magazine as a marketer or advertiser. There's a magazine called Plain Air Magazine. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Cool. 
I have um, no idea. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I met her, and then I was talking to her about about teaching workshops, and she goes, "Oh well, you know, talk to this person up in Door County, you know, and mm-hmm. see if you can get up there. It might be a good spot for you." So I haven't contacted them yet, but but you know, because I'm still in that process of is that right or not? <laughs> you know, I think it is. I just haven't contacted them yet. Certainly. Well, only. and, 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 and briefly to touch on, you know, is that right or not? What's, what feels not right about it? Mm. Um, well, they've changed. I don't want to get too much into this. Um, I know that they've recently changed um, the people who, who, uh, one of the head peoples there who works the workshops and stuff organizes okay. puts them together um i'm not as familiar with that person as i was the the previous person okay um uh two is i have this i have this belief in my head that door county is one of the big plein air events and even though i won't be doing the plein air event exactly you know i won't be doing the plein air event itself um the idea of going to the Peninsula Art School and teaching workshop there, boy, in my head is like, boy, you better be of that caliber. Okay. You know, um, which is probably a complete lie. <laughs> you know, uh, when I really stop here and talk to you about it and think about it, it's probably just a made up belief in my head. There's nothing that, that I, you pro- I, that that you're you're downgrading your own abilities here. Yeah, I'm downgrading my own abilities, um, which I do a lot. It, it is it is a habit that I have as an artist, and I I never realized it until last year. Again, when I was at Paint Grand Traverse and staying with a with a fellow uh, who's a collector and friend and stuff, and and Kurt was telling me like, you know, wow, you're really hard on yourself, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, I guess I am. It's you know, it's part of the reason I've gotten to the level I I'm at is because and and I think in fairness those artists that really do strive to be at the top of their game that's sort of part of their makeup is that they need to they're the you know it's sort of like you know if you if you take any musician or an athlete the only one they're competing against is themselves yeah in the end yeah you know there there's no you know, you're, you're not competing against the guy on the easel next to you. You're competing against what you can do and how you can do it. And when you start making that comparison to go, Oh, well, look at that. Oh, that's pretty cool. You know, well, gee, I'm not doing that. You know, yeah. then, then you go down a rabbit hole that, that doesn't lead to anything productive. You yes. Know? Yeah. 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 There's, Oh, they made it into an Apple TV. Um, movie as well and my wife got me the book it's, it's i can't remember it's like the horse the fox the owl and the, or not an owl mole and the boy or something like that hmm, okay book by mackie i think it's his name it's the author's name anyway uh in it um there's there's a there's a quote that i read that i was like that's just brilliant like you know the worst thing the, the worst thing you can do is compare yourself to others <laughs> yes that's very true and it's like oh my god it's like so true and yet we do that all the time right yes. you know like even even when i talk about like levels of art mm-hmm. well they're at a national level therefore they're better therefore it's 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 a comparison it's a judgment yeah not necessarily exactly exactly yeah. you know yeah, not and, and it may not be a direction i want to go right exactly with my art and and i think in the arts it's even more um uh rampant in, in this notion that you know oh where well, you're not like this or you know i mean i can think of dancers i can think of musicians i can think of people in the theater you know conversations mm-hmm. i've had with a lot of my artist friends um that you know they there is un- there is lots of rejection in art oh my god and 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 on things like um like if you're an actor well your hair color's wrong yeah like exactly, like, <laughs> you know, exactly. R- yeah. ridiculous stuff you know. you know i mean oftentimes talent and ability have absolutely nothing to do 
nothing to do with, with it. your with with your employability yeah. at that point. Yeah, um, correct. Had a had a very open conversation with with friends of ours whose daughter is into music theater, mm -hmm. and that's the struggle she's been facing. You know, she's yeah. incredibly talented. She's got a beautiful voice. She can act. She can sing. Um, and she's not getting the callbacks that she thought she would be getting. Uh, I think that'll change in time. Yeah, you know, it will. Uh, but yeah. it's it's that whole demoralizing uh, upfront. You know, well, you're not good enough. You know, yeah. compared to whom? <laughs> yeah, <All right>. yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, and I and I think that's that's like I said. I think that's even more more true in the arts uh, than other professions. Oh yeah. Um, just you know the the scrutiny that we put ourselves under. Yeah. Uh, we we like we, we talk about the awards like mark the award winning artist etc. You know, mm -hmm. I, I can show you the rejection slips, which are far more. Oh, I'm you know? sure. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, but I want to be positive. On this show. <laughs> Just failed my way to success. You know <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, what do you th what do you think you want to start to try to do differently now that we've had, you know, in in doing this? We we've come up with yeah. a couple of ideas. What what do you think I, is? I I I don't like the word network. I, I just, it's okay. just a it's just a word I don't like. I, right. you know, I like the idea of like, hey, I can of, go of a network, Christy, yeah. or go talk to, you know, Marianne or whoever, and and let's go, you know, ask them, hey, do you know any of these opportunities that I would love to start doing this more? And mm -hmm. like that sounds great. Okay. When it's oh, I've got to build a network. That sounds cold and unpersonal. Okay. And and I'm I'm a person who likes connection with people. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And, you know. Well, so so I like that idea of. Talk to the people. All right. Met. So, Talk how would you rephrase know. it in your head? Um, I'd say just go ask friends. Okay. <laughs> you no, know, just go talk to your friends, and you know, and go figure out. Drop my pen. Sorry. Oh, there we go. There uh, so, <laughs> you know, so I like that idea better. You know, just talking to the people you already know. Because then I, because there's also this, you know, you get these imposter syndromes, right? Where you get this feeling of, well, then I have to impress them. Then I have to be somebody who I'm not going, who I'm not really, mm -hmm. at least in my head, that's where my head grows, goes. Yeah. But if, if it's just, oh, it's just a person, it's just a friend, it's just somebody I've already met. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I can call them up, send an email, message them, whatever, yeah. you know, and that's easy, you know? Okay. Because so... otherwise it's a judgment. What if, if they reject me, am I being judged for that? And again, I know that's well, it, I, I, a heavier thing. It, it sounds like it depends on how you go about approaching it. You know, uh, I, you know, in my business, I, you know, yes, I do go to networking events, mm -hmm. but I never think of it as, you know, a yay or a nay from someone that I'm talking to. It's just, I'm going out to meet people. Yeah. It, it, it's really that simple. I, I've had to learn to do that at the plein air events. I'm sure. I, yeah. I, yeah. I would get like anxiety attacks when it, when, and, cause they, they draw some big crowds, mm -hmm. you know, sure. and I would get some anxiety attacks and I had to learn, I'm like, you know what? You're just here to, to uh, meet people. You're just here to. That's right. It's all that's about. It. That's all you are. And you know? people that's just are, are coming to see what you're doing. And that, yeah. that in and of itself can, can start a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, so. That's a definite plus. I mean, I, I, I'm definitely on board with contacting um, friends, acquaintances, et cetera, reaching okay. out and finding out what other opportunities are out there for me. Okay. Um, solves one aspect of it. Let's talk a little bit about getting my work out to the public public's eye. Okay. Um, if that's okay with you, because that's part of the other aspect of it. the workshops is one, but the work, selling the work, getting the work out to public's eye, and selling the work is all, is the other part of it. Right. Yeah. Um, because now again, now that I don't have galleries, you know, right. to show the work, how do I get it in front of people? I've got my website. Well, I think again, how can you leverage the people that you already know? Yeah. To do that. Yeah. You know, you you've got I don't want I'm sorry, I'm using the word network. It's okay. But you have you have a, a collection of people in your industry. 
that are in the exhibiting or event spa you know mm -hmm. space yeah. so how can you go about leveraging those connections as well when you when you reach out and say hey you know, are you interested in having, you know, I'd, I'd love to do a workshop or I'd love to put on a plain air event or whatever, mm. you know, who do you know that would be interested in that? Yeah. What's the possibility you could reach out and talk about those things with those people? Yeah. And that even opens up a possibility of, um, you know, talking to, to people I know or friends I know and stuff and saying, hey, let's have a show together. Let's, there you go. Let's do an exhibit. Let's do a, it can be a group or it can be, couple few people or you know we yeah. uh, again we, you know how do you start to gather you know gather people in numbers yeah you know yeah. You, you have other artist friends that you work with yeah. you know even doing like pop-ups and stuff so yeah doing a pop-up event for yeah. you and you know people in you know and if you're doing a plain air event you know have a pop-up event with you know fellow artists yeah you know during that show you said you had one coming up in april yeah 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 that's the first brush of spring which is put on by the indiana plein air painters association um all right know. so so you don't you don't want to do it during the show because that would you know distract from the show yeah it distracts from the show you know and it's also kind of okay poor form they won't invite you back <laughs> yeah. well yeah i get that yeah i get that <laughs> Um, yeah, you, you're there for their show and their yeah. their thing and, and you you know yeah you, you do that dance we need but to take a break okay I'm sorry we need to take a break so one more time tell people how they can get a hold of you uh again the easiest way is through my website uh vandervinstudio.com that is v-a-n-d-e-r-v-i-n-n-e studio studio s-t-u-d-i-o uh it has my my phone number on there i believe it's got a contact sheet email etc as well as instagram and facebook are probably okay. the easiest ways cool um this is the business mind and i am mark fechner uh we're going to take a quick break and when we return uh mark is going to give us uh some ideas of some of the takeaways that he is uh going to try to implement uh going forward and and whatnot if you if you yourself have any insights or uh, questions that you would like to share, please feel free to do that on our Transformation Talk Radio website or the Facebook uh, live feed forward slash Transformation Talk Radio. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Business Mind uh, with myself, Mark Fechner. So Mark Vandervin, Tell us, what are you going to walk away with? Uh, what's your takeaways from today's session? Mm. Uh, my takeaway from the session has been, uh, I think the biggest one is not to look at, at as it's networking, but to look at it as just meeting people. I think mean, okay. that's a huge one. Um, okay. But, but to, and to, to talk to others, to, 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 you know, to, um, use that network, use those friends, use those people, brainstorm with them, talk to them, find out what they do, how, how they've been managing the same process. Cause all of us artists are in the same problem. We've got the same issues. You know, how do we get the work out there without galleries, without reps, et cetera, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, talk to them, see what they'd be interested in doing as, as we were just talking a little bit, you know, maybe doing a, a, a post plein air event show or mm -hmm. something, you know, right. Um, who would be interested in that? Maybe, maybe doing a, an exhibit together, a pop-up exhibit, exhibit or something like that. Find out who would be interested in doing that and then brainstorm where we could hold that at. Right. How we would promote that and get people. And then come. maybe if there are costs involved, there share costs. So yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. Advertising can be now not just on you. It can be shared amongst yeah whoever else is, is doing the event with you. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, which Anything definitely helps. Else? definitely helps you know cool. any anything else that that has come to mind i don't think so at least not immediately i think just the idea of of of, of um finding out what other people's interests are in doing things together mm -hmm. you know um contacting the, the people who i know mm -hmm. you know 
for the workshops, et cetera. And then, and again, contact your friends and other people I know to see how they've done things, how they do things, and if they would be willing to to work together to right. put on shows, do pop ups, brainstorm about what things we can do as artists. Right. Yeah, there's it's 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 you know, and I think this is true in the arts community in general. There's strength in numbers. Yeah. You know, I know a lot of 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 actors who start their own theater companies because mm -hmm. it gives them control and their strength in numbers and you get to you 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 get that collaborative uh, uh cohesive type of of engagement yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's one of the things i like about the plein air events and about the workshops is it brings artists together because mm -hmm. when you're painting in the studio um, or even quite often just by yourself outside, you are by yourself. It yeah. is a solo endeavor. Yeah, it's very solitary. I agree. Yeah. 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 So meeting those people, I think is very important, especially because we are so just as artists or, you know, painters that we often get so isolated. Yeah. Yeah, I agreed. And, and I think to that end, the idea of, um, it, it's always been a challenge for individual, you know, especially painters, sculptors, poets, you know, mm -hmm. writers. They're so tied into, you know, their own heads. <laughs> yes. You know, Very musicians much. who, you know, practice, you know, we're, we're tied into what's going on up here mm -hmm. that we, we tend to forget about the, the communal uh, com, you know, camaraderie that happens within the communities. So yeah, yeah uh, that sounds like a, an, a a great idea. Tapping into that more, yeah, uh, for yourself. Okay, anything else that you might want to share? No, I think that's about it, buddy. Okay, I appreciate your help. Well, I appreciate you being here. Um, so if you, dear listener, would like to contact me. Uh, uh, or if you would like to be a guest on my program, I would welcome uh, that conversation. You can go to my website, uh, markfechner.com um, or mark at markfechner.com. Uh, so thank you, Mark, very much for being here. I've, I've uh, if, if people haven't gotten the notion, uh, Mark and I have worked together before mm -hmm. um, and um, we have a lot of, artistic interests in line with each other so i'm um i always love having those kind of conversations and exploring that creativity not that business isn't creative i, I think <laughs> business is highly creative but anyway thank you for being here for sharing uh this challenge and for being open to you know allowing all of us to kind of peek in and see your process mm -hmm. and how you can uh, you know kind of resolve this so our next guest uh, is going to be a, a, a business partnership. Um, uh, Ray Novak and Eric Tush, uh, they are the owners of Chicago Fireboat Tours. It's, it's a very cool thing. Uh, they have actually um, um, renovated an old Chicago Fireboat that was retired and are now doing tours of it uh, up and down the lakefront here in Chicago. But that's not what we're gonna talk about because uh, they are both veterans, uh, retired Navy veterans, and they are starting a non-for-profit to help veterans transition from military to civilian life and the challenges they're doing it. And the cool part is that they're doing it on a retired Naval vessel, which I'm just, all geeky out about, <laughs> I have to say. Um, so I would welcome you to join us at our next episode. Uh, the Business Mind airs the second and fourth Tuesday of every month at 10 a.m. Central. That's 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. So until we meet again, be safe, be healthy, and be profitable. See you next time. Thank you for listening to The Business Mind on Transformation Talk Radio. I'm Mark Fechner, where we focus on real people with real issues, and we tackle those issues in real time. I don't have the answers. I hope you find the answers within you. The Business Mind Show airs the second and fourth Tuesday of every month at 8 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Sometimes all you need is a change in perception. 
A certified coach will listen to your challenge, ask you intuitive, open-ended questions, help you find fresh perspectives, and then hold you accountable to reach your goals. Coaching is an investment in yourself that can create paths to greater success. To find out more about my coaching, go to markfechner.com.